previously on Flowers for Zoe, Stories for Dennis. <laughs> he would really be on my case for that because he's been on my case since I was 16 years old. Zoe, you got to get your license. Zoe, you need a vehicle. Zoe, you need to be able to drive. You need to get places. You need a car to go to school. You need a car to go to work. You need your car. It's good to know that he's still in your head. And now coming up on the show. Each section represents a portion of your life. Let's start with physical. Next is your mental health, social connections, recreation, home and living space. On today's podcast, we do a wellness wheel exercise. If you find today's episode activating, please reach out and talk to somebody. If you find the discussion helpful, please share the link with others. Welcome to podcast 27, everybody. Hi, Lara. Hi. Hi, Zoe. Hello. We're going to do an activity today called a wellness wheel. If you go online, you can find a lot of templates online. You can find colorful wheels. You can find wheels that are simple. You can find wheels that are more complex. I know in the Indigenous communities, they talk about the medicine wheel. That's not what we're going to do today. That offers layers of cultural components. Some of the the best wheels include some of those Indigenous themes But, you know, we can all have access to working with a wellness wheel. It's just a template. It's just, it's just a a visual. It's just a way of looking at your life in its many important components. If you've got a piece of paper, you're just going to put a circle as big as you can make it. And then you're going to divide that circle up. So you're going to do a line down the middle, a line from side to side through the middle. So now you've got four quadrants. And then you might do one diagonal and then another one diagonal. So you'll have eight sections. Each section represents a portion of your life. Let's start with physical. So in one of your sections, you might write down physical. And what this means is this is the physical wellness portion of your life. And in it, you get to think about the different areas of your life currently It might be your sleep schedule. It might be your exercise schedule. It might be the steps you put into a day and how much activity you have. You might think about how you nourish your body with food. And so if you thought about this on a one to 10 scale, so if you feel like, wow, you know, I'm, I'm doing pretty okay with the physical parts of my life. I feel like I move around and I exercise and I go for a swim. I'm about a five out of 10. Or you might say, oh, I don't know. I feel like this is an area of my life where I I want to put more focus on it. And it's maybe just a two or a three out of 10. And if this is an area of your life that feels really full, you might fill in the whole section and say, you know what? This is an area of my life that I put a lot of attention on and I'm feeling really good in it. So you may be thinking about a couple of immediate things about how you're going to evaluate this area of your life. So it can invite, you know, this opportunity to think about it a little bit more fully. When you're searching for that rating, you're thinking about the things that are going well. You might be thinking about where you have room to increase something or reduce something. So you might have some small goals. You might say, well, you know, I'm a six and that's pretty good. And I'm putting a lot of effort into a few different things to take care of myself physically. And you might then think, okay, what would I do then to kind of bump this from a six to a seven? Or what would I do to just keep maintaining this? Maybe I don't want to have to increase the number right now. Maybe I'm doing about as much as I can. So what do I need to do to keep this at a six or keep this at a four or five? So the next area is your mental health or your mental well-being. This is where your emotions are. This might be healthy relationships, managing stress, taking care of your heart, self-care, all those ways that you sort of take care of your, your mental health and your well-being. So let's go to the third one now, and that is 
social connections, social well-being? How connected do you feel to others? So you might be thinking about the areas of connection in your life, friends. Let's keep in mind, it's not that we're aiming for 10s in all of these areas. Like this idea that each area is going to be a 10, not actually a realistic goal or expectation. To be completely balanced, that's not really how life works or flows. Let's go on to the next area, which is recreation. This is the area where we think about the hobbies that we might have, the things we do for fun, the time we have for fun or for relaxation or for, you know, doing things outside of jobs or obligations and things like that. Let's move to home. So home and living space. This is where you think about the routines of your life at home, safety at home, the comforts of home. Are you having your needs met? Do you have the things you need? Does your home feel comfortable? Oh boy. We have a busy home here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know what to give myself here. <laughs> it's your wellness wheel. <laughs> So when you measure this area, you can be measuring it in a few different ways. It's one of those areas to just notice where does it feel full and full enough and good? And, and are there areas that feel like you need a little more? What is it that you feel you need? The next area is career. And career is portion of your life that would be made up of work volunteer work, school, and you might be thinking about your satisfaction or you might be thinking about um, the amount of time or stress associated with, you know, working on a course. Another area of the wellness wheel is finances. This can be just a reflection piece for you, right? Thinking about, oh, what, what's my relationship like with finances? might be financial literacy, like how much do I understand or not understand? How am I doing with organizing my life with finances? And then the last section of our wellness wheel is for spirituality slash, it could be environmental or intellectual and learning. So some people really connect with spirituality. Some people connect more with kind of like a biopsychosocial sort of understanding of the world and their connection to it. Some people really connect with, you know, working with the environment around them, including themselves. So this is an area for beliefs and values. This is the area of your life that you kind of hold for your own personal growth and understanding connection with the world or a belief system or your values. So now, what you're going to have in front of you is a bit of a working document. It may be the beginning of something where you can kind of have a look at your life sort of laid out in these areas. And you might be noticing that some areas feel quite full, some areas you feel more confident in, whereas other areas might be like, like oh, this is something that I'm struggling with or something I would like to put more attention on. You might be struggling with it and not wanting to put attention on it. And that's just an interesting thing to notice. Or it might be something that you want to put some focus on. Again, it's not that each area needs to be a 10. The key here is to fill it with as much as you feel you need and want. So if it feels lacking, you may want to put some attention on it. If it doesn't feel like it's lacking, even though it's a six, you might be quite fine to be there. So this is the wellness wheel. What do you think? I like it. I like it. I mean, it makes you look at what you're lacking on. It gives you time to reflect on yourself. It your it 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 uh, leads you to being mindful about what your life is like. Changes that can be made. Things that are perfectly fine, and then forming healthy habits, disregarding the the shitty habits that you have, right? 
Yeah, it's a really good point is to, you know, to be gentle with ourselves. If all you notice when you look at your wheel is deficits, then it makes you feel kind of shitty. Mm-hmm. So it's really important to look at the wellness wheel and say, what's going well? Yeah. Right? What's going well? That. Pick three areas where you'd like to create some goals. Mm, mine would be f- home and living, career and school, and finances would be my three to improve on. Both of you picked home and living space, but I would imagine, I mean, like you guys said, like your home and living space is quite full and you yeah. guys are in transition. We're in transition right now. We can't really, I can't really rate my home life now. It's, uh, yeah a lot that's a part that i don't you know we podcast all together but i'm way over here and you're way over there so that's not really a part that i get to see i mean it's quite full over there yeah right and which was the goal that was the goal and now you're in it but i would imagine i would imagine that it has its challenges for sure Mm -hmm. yeah everybody has their own way of doing things. Everybody has their way of living. (laughs) Everybody has their way of cleaning. Everybody has their own way of raising kids. Like no two people are the same. When you throw six of us, seven of us in a two bedroom house, what the fuck? (laughs) Like there's going to be some hard times. There's going to be some tips and some, Snazziness and some arguments and some disagreements, but then you also have love and never being alone and yeah, and that that's a big one, you know. You know so you just got to take everything with a grain of salt, right? I mean, we're family; we love each other. There's gonna be disagreements. People are gonna get upset sometimes. It's gonna be stressful. But it's so uh, how do you guys make it work? You want to start from that one? <laughs> I, th- I'm just... I think Zoe's very um oh my god, what's the word I'm looking for? Almost diplomatic. She's very diplomatic. I don't you know. You're very diplomatic in that you you know, you're very fair in the decisions that you make. You think about the family, you think about the big picture. Zoe gets really frustrated with the cleaning. She has a certain standard of home and it's really important to her that it stays that way. And even though she's living with me, she's very accommodating. You know, you are, you're very accommodating and, and understanding. And I think that that's what makes it work. I think. Mm -hmm. And I think we're both like that to an extent. Yeah. I literally want a beautiful home that people are like, you make it seem so effortless, Zoe. How do you do it? Meanwhile, they have no idea that I scrubbed on my hands and knees an hour before they came. Like you said, Nana does. You know what I mean? Like, I want them to, like, think that I'm just, I don't know, effort lessly clean that's what i want so what do you think having a clean house says about you i honestly i don't know oh god i just i think it i don't know i don't even know how to answer that and I don't mean it as a trick question. I think that yeah, there's a lot of stress around stuff like this. Like if we know someone's coming over where we, you, you know, you look around and you're like, oh my gosh, this place needs to be tidied up. I mean, yeah. there's something about our home that somehow becomes like a reflection of how us. we are. Yeah. It represents yeah. who we are and how we live and the choices we make, right? Yeah. What we're comfortable with and what we're not comfortable with. That, that and we sounds hold some like judgments. Nana. And we hold some judgments around it too, right? Oh, like if my if my place is a mess, that doesn't necessarily have to say something about me. It might, but it might not. 
I, I, I I'm not putting it out there like I have an answer. Um, but I think, yeah. think it's it's interesting, right? Our home tends to be this like canvas. And if we don't care a lot about it, that might say something. If we care a lot about it, that might say something. If it's the biggest thing in the world, that might say something. Yeah. But it's just interesting and to notice. That's where I want to kind of cut myself off a little bit because, you know, things that I worry about 90% of my time are things that I should only be worried about 5% of my time. And that's bothersome to me because then I'm irritated, then I'm frustrated, then I'm angry. And I don't want to be that person that's angry because my house is, you know, not up to par every day, but I am. And I don't want to be like that, right? Is that big on your list, Daniel? No. Nope. Oh, God, no, I'm the opposite. I, I, I that's have a where the stress falls in, right? Because we're very different when it comes to cleaning and stuff like that. And I know he hates cleaning and I need it cleaned, right? And it's, it gets frustrating, you know? It gets super frustrating for you. Yes. I, yes. And you, I'm telling you, Zoe, you're, I think you're handling it so well, our living situation. Like I said, you're fair. You're insightful, you're analytical. And you know, I was thinking about this the other day. Like, you're becoming one of the people that I trust. And that's a big thing. Why and it's, that? it's because of your actions. You know, when the going gets tough, it's the actions that you choose and the things that you say. They're really good. I don't know what other word to use but it's really it's really nice and i trust you like i trust your judgment almost you know i oh, do thank you. Yeah. thank you so yeah my story is when i when i uh, went back to university i had a teacher and on on the first class she said to everybody look there's a lot of work on this class. There's going to be a lot of reading. And I just want to remind you guys, a lot of the times this work gets built up and something has to give. And a lot of you guys have kids at home, you have jobs, you know, this is going to, and you have to make a decision. Are you going to spend the extra hour you have cleaning? Or are you going to spend it studying, reading a book, doing something great? And that really stuck with me. I hate cleaning. I look at cleaning as something that a robot can do. We just don't have the robots yet, you know, but that's me. But for Zoe, Zoe's a mom. Zoe's a homemaker. So for you, cleaning is something that might be necessary and important, but not all the time. That you'd rather spend your time, Daniel, uh, like reading something interesting, doing something Sometimes, you know, the things that become important, you know, are specific to the shape of our week looks, right? And so yeah. if right now, you know, Zoe's in this homemaker, raising kids, young kids, right? And there tends to be a whole lot more supervision around that. Uh, it is an all-encompassing full-time job. Oh, God, yeah. I remember I remember what it's like to have, you know, an 11 and 12-year-old. I, I remember how busy it was. When I was a father to an 11 and 12 year old or 11 and 13 year old, I was going to the doctors and going to the appointments and doing this and doing homework and packing lunches. I remember what it's like. It can get pretty busy. When I look back at what it takes to be a parent of two young kids, oh my God, how did I do it? Like what you're doing, Zoe, I look at you, oh my God. Just watching you sometimes makes me tired. <sighs> Like when you're up and you're going, you're managing three, four things at one time. You're cleaning. You're thinking about the girls. You're thinking about the fridge and what to, to buy. You're thinking about, I don't know, maybe their homework. You're thinking about their friends. Yeah. It's busy. It's so crazy, you know? Like it's almost like you pointing everything I do, like how you just did. When I'm in that zone doing three or four or five things or whatever at once, I'm not even really like there. I'm like in a completely different zone. 
So are you saying it's actually, it's nice to be able to connect these things, like to hear him describing all the things that he sees you doing and you're saying, yeah, kind of when I'm in it, I'm in it. I'm not really thinking about it. That right. Way. I'm not thinking of how crazy it is. Or how important it is. Or, yeah. Like it's just, it's, we can point out all these little things that are wrong with us, but it's so hard to point out the good qualities that we have. Mm. So me hearing what he's saying, I'm like, wow, like that is me. Like, I, wow, I, I do do that. Like, you know, that's, that's crazy. That's cool. That's good. You know, I'm on the go. I'm not even thinking about it, but me reflecting on myself. I'm like, fuck, I sleep like so much. I wake up, I have my coffee, I go lay down and I'm sleeping. I eat food at lunchtime and then I'm laying down watching my, what do I'm like? I feel like I'm doing nothing, but then to hear it from somebody else, somebody else's perspective, I'm like, wow, I do do shit. I'm not mm -hmm. always sleeping. <laughs> it might be a really um, helpful activity for you to kind of invite yourself to reframe a few things or to acknowledge a few things. Like when we talk about mindfulness, sometimes it's just kind of slowing things down and acknowledging, okay, what's happening right now? So if you ask yourself what's happening right now and you get kind of a negative response, you might invite a bit of a reframe. Mm -hmm. I'm allowing my body to rest. I'm enjoying my coffee. Yeah. I'm in, I'm taking the time to enjoy the quiet of being able to be alone because the kids are at school and this is a time for me to be able to do this. Right. I'm going back to sleep because my body needs more. That's a good idea. Why don't we do a follow-up episode? Let's do that. Keep your, your, uh, well, okay. and we can do that. I got mine. Me too. They look awesome guys. Thank mm -hmm. you.